Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at this knife. This is by ABKT, American Buffalo Knife and Tool. Uh, they've got several lines of knives. This is their uh, Elite Series. And this is the Nighthawk, specifically the Desert Nighthawk. They've also got the Black Nighthawk, which you can just guess what color that one is. This is a fairly dark brown, not super dark brown, but it's a dark brown, uh, black wash blade, D2 steel, ball bearings, liner lock, clipper, kind of knife. I think you might be interested in it. Like it's got knife, a good price. Some things that and, are cons uh, on it and uh, some things that are pros. You want to hear more about it? Stick around. The full review is coming in just a minute. So here is the Desert Nighthawk. This is AB007T. Made in China, just like uh, most knives that I review. You see the logo here for the uh, ball bearings. That's something that was done uh, when ball bearings were first coming out, but that's not all that long ago. It's just a few years. They are stainless steel ball bearings. You'll see them in a little while. The detent ball looks like it is ceramic. We've got a flipper tab. There's just a little bit of jimping on the head of that flipper tab, otherwise it's rounded. Uh, the edges, it's very, very slightly softened. They're not chamfered or anything. The uh, action, quite good. Uh, there's no oil in there. I've already took this one apart and I recorded it just a few minutes ago. So now the action's even better than it was before, but the action was just fine before. Very easy you know, button method where you're pushing down and it flies open. Light switch method while pulling back works just fine. Black wash on uh, both of the Nighthawk models, uh, sort of like what we call the uh, stone wash, but this is like a black stone wash. We call it black wash. I like it. There's a swedge across the top here. We've got our uh, saber grind right here. It's a flat grind that only goes part way up the blade. Uh, the tip on this knife is quite aggressive. Uh, the blade starts getting thinner right at the end where this swedge ends and the comes together right there where that line goes. So it's a fairly durable tip, but it's a you know a precision kind of tip as well. We've got a long, slow belly, just a short section over here that seems kind of straight. The uh, jumping along the spine here isn't too aggressive. It's quite nice. It's if you take the handle and make it look level like this, it looks like it's dropping down, but it's flat and straight. So I don't know, what is this, a dropping uh, straight back knife? I'm not sure. Oh, I forgot to do the size comparison with the Ontario Rat. My apologies. Line up the pivot pins. There you go. Let's move them over just a little bit so we can see everything. It's a smaller knife. Uh, it clearly is a smaller knife. The uh, cutting edge length, is a little bit less, not even a quarter of an inch less than the Ontario Rat 1, but it's a smaller and slightly lighter knife. Uh, I was talking about the blade. We've got the flats, uh, D2 steel, as I mentioned earlier. It's quite big uh, written on there. I prefer it to be quite a bit smaller. On the other side, uh, usually I like, you know, most knives you see it horizontal, but this one's got the brand name ABKT, American Buffalo Knife and Tool, model number AB007T, PRC, People's Republic of China. I like this blade. It's a good looking blade that's quite functional. They made it very sharp at the factory and so cuts quite well. We've got a forward choil here and just like a lot of forward choils on knives, it's a little bit small for me. In fact, the handle altogether is a little bit small for me. My hands are just into the extra large. Nine times out of ten, if I'm looking for gloves that I want to buy, I've got to buy extra large. Sometimes I buy large, but not all that often. This knife is better for men's medium and men's large hands, not ex extra large. Because if I put my hand in here, sneak my index finger all the way up, then I can just barely get my pinky finger over here, but quite often my pinky finger hits the top of this and it's a bit of a hot spot. 
you know, reaching over. If I, you know, put it straight in there and carefully get a grip, then I can just barely get my hand in there. But then if I squeeze, it's just tight in there. My fingers are being squeezed together between, you know, those two points. Other than that, it's very comfortable. So if my hands were just men's large or medium, I think this knife would be very, very comfortable indeed. We've got a 3D mill G10. It's slightly rounded. Looks nice. Pocket clip is right and left, and it's a deep carry pocket clip. It's got button screws on it, uh, but they don't get in the way. I don't prefer button screws, but it, it is what it is. And the body is put together with button screws as well, which is the industry standard for budget knives. I just hope the industry standard changes <laughs> to putting flush screws in. Let's take a look at how well it goes into a pocket. It wants to climb over right away, so that's a good thing. And it slides all the way up. I never had it catching on those button screws, so that's a good thing. So, yeah, not bad. And easy to take back out. The clip doesn't retain too hard, but it's got adequate retention, so quite nice. Like I said, T6 screws back here. I've got a slight bit of a swell on the back to help it fit into the palm of the hand right there. So uh, when you're holding this knife, it feels pretty good in the palm. The uh, lanyard option is right at the very back, which is where I prefer it to be at the very back. And it's inset a little bit, which is quite nice. So if you like to uh, have lanyards, I think that's the best spot for it. Open pillar construction. We've got these hourglass shaped black uh, pillars in there. Lots of skeletonizing on this knife. And then we've got, you know, black rounded screws. It looks like um, it should have a D-shaped pivot pin. And it does have a bit of a D-shaped pivot pin, but the liners have perfectly round holes, so it could spin freely, but it just hasn't. The hole on the uh, show side liner is so tight that the pivot pin goes through it and it's it barely gets in there. You have to push hard and work hard to get it in there once you've taken it apart. And that stops it from spinning freely. It's a friction fit, basically. So the screws, they've got nice tolerances. There's not uh, a lot of play in there. Get that in there. Just a little bit of play. Not bad at all. That's very common, that tiny amount of play. You need some play. Uh, the T6 screws have just a little bit more. Uh, I don't think I risked having any of those strip out. I didn't have to do any extra work. They came up, it came apart quite nicely. Uh, talk a little bit more about the handle, uh, other than the nice action from those ball bearings. Uh, Lockup is exactly where I like a brand new knife to be. So there's room for it to wear across, yet it's fully engaged. There's just a tiny bit of jimping across the top of the liner release, and then there is a bit of a, a chamfering on the side here. It's very easy to get your thumb in there to release the liner lock. No problems at all. Worked every time for me. So well made. I like that. The price point on this thing is the low 30s, uh, or is it the mid 30s? Upper 30s. $37.99 at White Mountain Knives. Take off 10%. That makes it $34.19 for this knife. Uh, American design, made in China. Uh, American Knife Tool is owned by a couple, I uh, forget what state they live in, but uh, uh, the owners do their own designs. So these designs are designed in the United States of America. Uh, talking about the prices, uh, $34.19 is around $43.50 Canadian. I still have to check and see if there's any Canadian vendors that are selling this. I'll have to check at uh, Warriors and Wonders. That's Blades Canada, but I haven't seen it anywhere else. Uh, so, yeah, the best place to get it, the best price, is at White Mountain Knives. About 28 euros. I did not find it at any uh, European store at all. You know, which makes sense. American Knife and Buff Knife... American Buffalo Knife and Tool, ABKT is not a super well-known brand. It's a decent brand, but they're, they're a small company still. 
So let's uh, take this knife apart and show you the insides of it now. Uh, you can see that the internals are very well skeletonized. I like that. That's how it got down to four ounces, even up here or the bottom part here, even within the lock bar arm. So yeah, this, I really like that. That's how they got it down to four ounces. I just noticed that uh, these are built so that the screw could come out on either end. So there's two pivot screws and uh, one piece. If you've got thread locker, I would suggest uh, putting thread locker on the end that has the smooth head and uh, screwing it tight and letting that cure nice and tight on there so that uh, it won't spin along. Well, it'll still spin. The th that screw won't spin in there. I had no problem taking it apart. I didn't have to uh, put any pressure on the back or anything. I just undid the T8 here and the two T6s on the body screws. It took a little bit of prying to get the uh, blade, uh, to get this liner up and off of the pivot pin, but uh, wasn't too bad at all. So yeah, nice and light. And of course, the uh, black one, the black, the, uh, black uh, Nighthawk, it just has different color handle scales. Steel ball bearings, and it looks like a ceramic detent right there. And now it's time to go over all the sizes, dimensions, and such. I'll have this on the screen when I'm doing it. The weight of this knife, 114 grams, that's four ounces. The factory sharpness, 75. That's very sharp from the factory, I like that. The uh, blade length, and the cutting edge length, because of this pokes out a little bit, is the same. 8.15 centimeters, 3.209 inches. The uh, blade thickness, 2.93 millimeters, which is 0.1155 inches, so just a little bit under an eighth of an inch. Blade depth, widest spot is right off the choil. 27.39 millimeters, that's 1.079 inches. The thickness of the edge right behind the grind, on this knife it's really easy to see. It's where the black ends and the shiny silver begins, or gray. 0.65 millimeters, 25 and a half thousandths of an inch. So a little thicker behind the grind than I prefer, but not terrible. The grind angles, let me see it again. Yeah, this side is 15.4 degrees, fairly consistent for the whole length, less than a degree variability along the length on this side. This side wasn't sharpened quite that well, 27.1 degrees down here. A little bit less right here, a little bit more right here. <laughs> so a little bit of variability. So it could have been sharpened better. Uh, this D2, they say 58 to 60 is the Rockwell hardness on it, which I think is ideal. I don't know if it's actually that hard. I would probably sharpen this to 18 degrees per side if it was between 58 to 60. Now for what are we on next? The handle. The handle length, the longest is 11.69 centimeters, which is 4.602 inches. The uh, grip area, it's uh, under, well, actually going back to here between my thumbs. It's a little bit under 10 centimeters, just a little bit under four inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 16.32 millimeters, which is 0.643 of an inch. I like that because that's the thickest spot. Since it's not flat, that's wonderful. Like the narrower spots are closer to half an inch. So it fills the hand nice and well, good secure grip. The handle depth, uh, the widest spot that your hand encounters is this spot. 24.69 centimeters, that's 0.972 of an inch. When the knife is closed and going into your pocket, the widest point is right there, 35.49 millimeters, which is 1.398 of an inch. Total length of this knife, when the blade's deployed, tipped to the very end, 19.8 centimeters, 7.795. So just under eight inches, you know, and this section here is about three and a third inches. Not bad, the ratios are good. Uh, the balance point on this knife is right there, quite good. Thanks to all that skeletonizing, it's nice and light. Pros and cons, uh, let's go over the pros first. 
for my size hand, it's not comfortable, but for smaller hands, it's a very comfortable grip. Maybe the edges here could use a little bit of sanding to soften them a little bit, um, or these edges in here, but it, overall, it's quite comfortable. I like black wash like this. It's well done, so that's a good thing. Uh, the jimping feels good in the hand. Uh, the blade slices well. It's not a supreme slicer or anything, but it slices well. Useful tip for doing delicate work or for puncturing things if you need to. The uh, pocket clip is nice, deep carry. It's not this. I thought the edge here coming up was going to get hot in the hand right there, but it didn't. So there's that. And the button screws don't quite get in the way. I don't prefer them, but they don't get in the way of going deeply into the pocket, so that's good. The G10 is well milled. Uh, the lanyard hole being recessed and at the very back, I like that. Right and left pocket clip, I didn't mention that before, I like that. Highly skeletonized and nicely skeletonized. I like that quite a lot. Uh, the cons. It's not uh, a knife that feels comfortable in just about every size hand. Uh, you do need to be men's large or smaller for this to be comfortable. The uh, forward choil is too small for people with really big hands. Maybe men's large hands are going to fit in there better, but uh, being they sharpened it so well, I nicked my finger when I just went to grab it, so it's easy for me to make it a little bit bigger, but I'm not going to make it bigger because the grip doesn't fit that well anyways. Button screws, don't like them that much, but they're not terrible. That's a tiny thing. Uh, I'd like less or smaller writing, mostly smaller writing. Get rid of that logo here for the uh, ball bearings and make the D2 a fair bit smaller. Maybe even put it on the same side and then the show side would be nice and clean. You know, that D2 just looks out of place. Again, that's a minor thing. Then the last thing is, I mentioned before, how thick it is behind the grind. And again, it's not terribly thick behind the grind, just a little bit thicker than I prefer it to be. Maybe if the saber grind uh, came up higher so that it wouldn't get thicker behind the grind too fast, like as soon as we sharpen this knife a couple times, like if I put this thing to 20 degrees per side, it's going to end up being a little bit thicker behind the grind than it is now. And every time it gets sharpened, it's thicker, thicker. So maybe if it, the uh, this was a full flat grind or a high saber grind, like another quarter of an inch up, that'd be a little bit better. But those are minor things. This is actually quite nice. Uh, I recommend this knife for guys that uh, and gals that have hands uh, no larger than men's large. I think this is a good knife. Good price. Uh, good action. Nice and smooth. You know, I'd like the detent to be a little stronger. Well, hey, I'm starting to go over myself again. So, yeah, nice knife. If you're looking for a knife like this, I suggest you go to White Mountain Knives. You can find uh, American Buffalo Knife and Tool uh, knives at a number of other stores as well. But the best price I could find after my 10% discount code CCE was at White Mountain Knives. So there you go. What do you think of this knife? Are you interested in getting one? Leave us some comments down below. Thank you for subscribing. That really does make a difference. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.